Hi and welcome to my channel Sew so Amelia where I talk all about making a handmade wardrobe for me and my children. Welcome to this week's vlog where I'm going to talk all about the Megan Nielsen Hevea coat. So much to those of you who come back every week and watch my videos it's so good to have you following along on my sewing journey to those of you who haven't yet subscribed it would be so good if you could click on the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you will be made aware of when I publish my next vlog so for today's vlog I'm going to be sharing all about the Megan Nielsen Hevea coat uh, today is Monday and I'm going to be taking you along on my journey this week as I sew up the pattern so it's a bit like a sew along and then at the end of the week I will share a review about how I found making the pattern and any amendments or adjustments I made along the way. So here is the pattern. It's described as a loose fit jacket and coat and it has three different variations in terms of length. You've got the sort of hip length jacket, you've got a cropped jacket and then a full length coat. There are two different finishes, there's the collar band or there is the bound version and you can add an optional tie to the bound version to close that at the front. I also really like the deep pockets on this coat at the front, I think those will come in really handy for autumnal walks at the park with my children. So Megan Nielsen patterns are great, they've got a really wide size range. The version of the pattern that I bought is the size 0 to 20 version. A size 20 is a bust of 32, a waist of 24 and hips of 34 inches, and the size 20 is a bust of 46 inches, waist of 38 inches and hips of 48 inches. So that's a good size range, but she also has the Megan Nielsen Hevea coat in her curve range, and that is from sizes 14 to 34. So size 14 is a bust of 40, a waist of 32 and hips of 42 inches, and the size 34 is a bust of 60 inches, waist of 52 inches and hips of 62 inches. So it's so, so great that this pattern has such a fantastic wide range of sizes. Now this pattern is described as being drafted with an intentionally oversized fit and I really like this relaxed look. I'm planning to make this as kind of an autumnal and a spring jacket that I can just throw on when we have those sort of slightly cooler but not too cool afternoons or slightly crisp sunny mornings. Um, or I would like to layer it up underneath a thicker coat perhaps when it gets quite cold in the winter. So I don't want it to be too oversized. So when I was looking at my sizes, I usually fit into a size 10 across the bust, a size 12 in the waist and a 14 in the hip in Megan Nielsen patterns, because I have a bust of 36 inches, a waist of 30 inches and hips of 42 inches. So I do usually straddle two or three sizes. So when I looked at the measurements for this pattern, I fit into the size 10 for the bust. Um, and in terms of the finished measurements, the bust, waist and hips are the same. So that means for a size 10, I'd be looking at a finished bust, waist and hip measurement of 48 and 5 eighths inches. So there's quite a lot of ease in that. So what I thought I would do is I will size down to the size 8. Now, in fact, the size 8 is correct for my bust measurement, obviously not for my waist and hips. However, the finished measurements for that are 47 and 5 eighths inch, so actually only an inch smaller than the size 10. But I think I will size down just to give me a slightly closer fit. I did also look at the finished measurements for the length of the coat and for the length of the sleeves, and there still looks to be plenty of ease in both those measurements in terms of my height and the length of the sleeve that I require. Like I said, there are three different lengths for this coat and three different finishes. So that means there's a total of six different variations for this coat and I'd like to make variation B. Now that is the hip length jacket and that is finished with bias binding and I'm going to include those optional ties across the front just so that I can tie that closed to keep warm on those cooler autumn afternoons. So now the great thing about this pattern is that for sizes 0 to 12, if you are making this in a fabric that has a width of 150 centimeters, you only need two meters of fabric, so that's great. Now, you either need fabric and a lining if you're just making a lined coat, or you can simply make it from the fabric itself, or <laughs> you can make it from a pre-quilted fabric, or you can make it from fabric, a lining, and wadding to make your own quilted coat. So there are so many options with this pattern. So like I said, I'm going to go for view B, 
and I've bought a pre-quilted fabric from The Fabric Godmother. I would love to make my own quilted coat from some of my scraps that I've kept, but that's just not a project for right now with three small children running around in the house and I do need an autumn coat. What I did was I bought this beautiful pre-quilted fabric from The Fabric Godmother, and this is it here. So it's a lovely light denim on the top, and then it's got wadding in the middle, and then on the reverse it has this beautiful snuggly sort of teddy style shearling fabric they call it. So you can see here, you can see the wadding uh, and the thin, it's quite a thin denim sort of almost like a chambray fabric on the outside um, and then this beautiful snuggly layer here. So I actually think this will be perfect as an extra layer in the autumn um, and like I say underneath a thicker coat when it does cool down in the winter. So like I said, I'm making the size 8. That fabric was 145 centimeters wide and last night I did cut out those pattern pieces and actually I've got quite a good amount of fabric left over so I did manage to get those pieces cut out of under 2 meters of fabric which was really good. The other thing I also started cutting out last night was my bias binding. Because I'm making a view B, that's the bias bound version and I actually need 8.1 meters of bias binding. Now last month I made my daughter a beautiful dress out of this Liberty fabric that I bought from Minerva. And I had a sizable amount of this left over, not enough to make another garment, but enough for another project. So I had put it away in my scraps drawer. And when I received the denim fabric, I thought this would be a really good pairing with that fabric in terms of making the bias binding for my coat. So the other thing I did last night was to start cutting out uh, all these pieces of bias binding for the coat. So I've got some really good lengths here and obviously the next step is to stitch those all together so I can check just how many meters of that I have got all together before I start working on the coat. So today what I plan to do to get this project started is to make the bias binding and then to attach the bias binding to the pocket pieces and then to attach those pocket pieces to the coat front pieces. Now we have quite a busy afternoon with some clubs and homework and dinner and all of those lovely busy things that happen in the afternoon. Uh, so I probably won't get back up to the sewing room now until much later this evening. Uh, so I think that's probably a manageable chunk of things for me to get done tonight. It's Tuesday and I thought I'd catch you up with the progress that I made on the coat yesterday. I managed to get the pockets bound and then I basted them onto both fronts. So I think this must be, yes, this must be the left front. <laughs> Um, so that's on. My machine did not love basting the pocket on through these layers of fabric. Now my machine is fine. I've had it for a long time now. I bought it when I first came to London over 10 years ago now and it's done me great service. It's sewn an awful lot of garments <laughs> but it it is sort of nearing the end of its life and I'm hoping to upgrade it in November. So if you've got any recommendations for machines you absolutely love, please do put them in the box below. I have a couple that I've got my eye on, um, but I would love any recommendations that you have. So I have basted that on and today's job is to sew these front pieces to this back piece uh, across the shoulder seams and then down the side seams and then I need to bind those edges on the inside of the coat just to make sure that they are nicely finished. Now like I said my machine had a bit of an issue with sewing all those layers of fabric together last night so I'm just going to see how I go. I've popped the walking foot on just to help a little bit uh, I hope that helps and I think what I will do with the binding is I will try and sew it by machine on onto one side of the fabric and then I think I'll probably hand finish it, hand sew that binding on on the inside. The pattern says you really only need to hand sew it if you're planning on making the garment wearable from either side. 
I don't think I'll ever wear it with the fluffy side on the outer, but who knows. Uh, I do think though it might be easier to hand sew that binding down rather than try and battle with my machine. We'll see how we go though. I will start by sewing the shoulder seams together today and the side seams and getting those bound. I've not got a huge amount of time today because I'm about to hop on the bike and pick up my boys, but I think I can probably get that done. My sewing is all about a little bit every day. I don't usually get huge chunks of time to sew and I really really like the instructions for this Hevea coat. It seems like quite a straightforward sew so far and the instructions are split up into really manageable little chunks which is great for someone like me that has these little chunks of time in their day. So anyway, on with the sewing. Hello, it's Thursday and I'm back in the sewing room. It's only for 20 minutes, but I'm here. And I thought I would show you how I'm getting on with the coat. So, good news is, it looks like a coat. So here it is. It looks like quite a big coat, but it's actually quite a good fit. It's quite um, snug. Although with these lovely drop shoulder sleeves, there is a lot of looseness around the shoulders, which is great in terms of movement and ease of movement. So, I finished putting in the sleeves, as you'll see last night and I have finished sewing on the binding. I actually was working on that this morning whilst my daughter was happily playing for a few minutes. On the inside of the sleeve is also bound with that um, Liberty binding. So really that's almost all done now. So the final step is to attach a loop here to hang it up when I want to do that. I am going to add the optional ties just here at the front, again with the Liberty binding, just so that I can tie that closed if I should like to do that. So I'll add the tie at the front and then I just need to bind the edges. So it's the same process as the rest of the coat and then I'll have to hand sew that binding down. So that will be quite a big job because obviously you're going all the way around the exterior seams of the coat and also you finish off the sleeves with that bias binding. So. I think in terms of a sew, this coat isn't too difficult, it's just a little time consuming in terms of hand sewing things down. So that's the next step for me. I'm going to see if I can get a start on that before I have to jump on my bike and go and collect my boys and I will check back in with you later and let you know how I get on. Hi, so it is Thursday evening and I've just finished on my sewing machine, sewing the binding to, I've actually sewn it to the outside of the coat so that that's a really neat secure finish. And then obviously I'm going to turn that binding down to the inside and hand sew it. Now that's quite a lot of hand sewing, which is fine. Uh, I haven't got any plans for tonight, but I th I'm thinking I might give my mum a call. She lives in New Zealand, so this time of night is a really good time to call New Zealand, because obviously it's their morning. Or I might watch Cruella. I absolutely adore the costumes in that film, and it's quite a good one to just have on in the background when I'm doing some sewing. So we'll see. Perhaps a little chat with my mum. Bit of Cruella, and I might just get this finished tonight, <laughs> I'm hoping. And then tomorrow I can show you a finished coat. It's Friday and I'm really happy to report I have finished my Hevea coat. So here it is. <clears throat> um, I thought I would give you a, a brief review and let you know what I thought of the pattern and the fabric. Now the pattern itself was pretty straightforward. There were only five pieces. There was the back, the two front pieces, the sleeves, and then there was the optional hanging loop and ties which I chose to cut out so five pieces for me plus the 8.1 meters for my size of the bias binding which I made myself obviously you could buy that if you wanted to but I had this lovely fabric left over from my daughter's dress and as it's a Liberty cotton I wanted to make sure I used every last scrap so I did use that and pieced it together to make the length of bias binding that I needed and I'm really pleased with that I think it works really well in terms of the colours against this chambray colour here. And if I chose to, I could wear this um, it's double-sided coat 
because I did finish off the binding by hand in most places. I have to confess that on the inside of the sleeves I did finish that off with the machine to stitch that binding down but that was because I knew that I'm probably not going to wear it with the shearling fabric on the outside. I do plan to wear that with it on the inside and so actually those sleeve seams will be hidden all of the time so that's fine but the rest of it these pocket seams and things I finished by hand so in terms of a sew it's definitely beginner friendly I think the trickiest part is just getting the thickness of that material through your machine but you don't have to make this from a quilted fabric you could use any number of fabrics for this so you could use a linen you could use a chambray you could use a cotton for almost more of a light summer weight jacket for the summer uh, and then through to some boiled wools and these quilted fabrics for the winter. But I think that was the trickiest bit really was working out how to get that through the machine without the machine getting too cross with me. But the fabric itself was really easy to work with. The only other thing I would say about working with like a shearling or a teddy fabric is that you do end up with fluff all over yourself, all over the machine and all over the floor. So now that I've finished this make, I will need to go and clean my machine. So if you were a confident beginner, I think you could definitely give this pattern a go. Megan Nielsen instructions are excellent and this pattern was no different from any of the other ones I have sewn. The pattern instructions are clear, they are illustrated so you really know exactly what you're doing at each step. Um, it was very straightforward so and very satisfying. I don't mind hand sewing. Uh, I think I said last night I had a lovely chat with my mum while I was hand sewing this binding down and then watched a little bit of a film. So I find it relaxing really to do some hand stitching in the evening so that was no bother really. It just was quite time consuming so it did take me a good week of my little 20 minutes here and there to get this coat finished. But the process itself was not too difficult. Now I love so many things about this coat. It is cozy, it is just the right sort of side of oversized. It's not too big and it certainly fits well around my hips. But there is a little bit of room across my shoulders and in the back which I do often find as I often need to do small back adjustments on patterns. So there is a little bit of extra room across my back. I don't mind that so much because especially if I'm running around after children at the park it just gives me a bit of room to move. Now the length is another thing I don't mind. I didn't want to make the cropped one as I thought from the pictures it was too cropped but actually I think that length might almost suit me better. I have got a pear shape and this coat just hits on my hips. Now that's fine, it will be a great extra layer in the spring and the autumn and I will still wear it under my coats and things in the winter when it gets really cold. It will be perfect. However, I think for my body shape the cropped length would probably look better on my figure. So I think in the springtime I would really like to give this pattern another go with another sort of quilted fabric and in the cropped length. I'm really glad I added the hanging loop. I think I'll use that a lot. I'm also really glad I added the ties as this just does pull it in a little bit around my waist and just give me a little bit of shaping which I really like. You can see it's got a dropped shoulder so my shoulder sort of finished here and then this just hangs quite loosely which is really nice and the sleeves finish really nicely at my wrist. Now what I am going to probably end up doing is just folding that cuff back a little bit just to give me a bit more um, ease of movement when I'm running around at the park and I really like the way that that looks folded back as well with that white contrast against the chambray. So overall I'm really pleased with this coat. I wore it this morning and it is super snuggly, <laughs> very very nice to wear. So I can see myself getting a lot of wear out of this as just a casual extra layer in the autumn. So I hope you enjoyed today's video, thanks for watching along. I hope if you have a go at the Havea coat that you really enjoy making it and wearing it. I certainly am going to enjoy wearing mine. Happy sewing, have a great week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!